let's take a look at three different types of cost behavior. These are critical for forecasting and budgeting. The first type is a fixed cost. So as you can see on the graph, the cost does not change on the vertical axis as the volume of output increases on the horizontal axis. An example for this would be office rent. No matter how many units of production a company has, its head office is not changing and that rent that's monthly is exactly the same. It has no impact on the volume that's outputted. Then there are variable costs. As you can see in this chart, the cost is a linear line and it increases as volume outcreases with a consistent ratio. Now, we'll get into this later. The line may not always be straight. It may not always be a linear relationship, but let's assume that in the simplest terms, it is. An example of this would be credit card processing fees on a transaction. Imagine a retail business that sells a product and the credit card companies charge 3% for every transaction. There is a direct correlation between the number of units sold and the credit card fees that the company will occur as the credit card transactions double, the cost double. So that's a simple example of a variable cost. And finally, there's semi-variable, or sometimes called semi-fixed, where you have a combination of fixed and variable costs. What this typically means is that a cost is fixed up until a certain point and then becomes variable. As an example, imagine an assembly line of workers. There is a baseline number of workers required to run the assembly line. With very small units of output, that cost is fixed, and output can increase up until the assembly line reaches its threshold for the number of workers. Then they may need to add additional workers on top, so you get that variable cost kicking in over a certain level of production, but with zero production, there is still a baseline fixed cost for that assembly line. So we need to think carefully when forecasting about whether costs are fixed, variable or semi-variable. Think about your organization. What are the fixed costs? Make sure you've clearly identified them. Then identify all the variable costs. And finally, think about some that may be a combination of the two. Let's look at the earnings volatility of a company with all fixed costs versus all variable costs. When costs are entirely fixed, we can see that as revenue moves around, the company may switch between being profitable when revenues are greater than fixed cost and operating at a loss when revenues are lower than fixed costs. Conversely, if you imagine an entirely variable cost structure, the company will always be operating at a positive margin. However, the trade-off is that as volume increases, so do the total costs, and therefore there's not nearly as much leverage on the upside when things are going well. So it's important to understand the volatility of earnings and the impact it can have on the organization. The organization will need to clearly understand how they should be prepared to manage earnings given the cost structure of the company. There's operational leverage by having more fixed costs, but that also means more volatile earnings. So let's look at an example here. We're going to make a very simple income statement consisting of sales, variable cost, a contribution margin, fixed costs, and a net profit margin. So here we have company A, and it's got 40% variable cost, $40,000 of variable cost on $100,000 of sales, and $40,000 of fixed cost, so it has a net profit of $20,000 or 20% 20 margin. Let's compare that to company B. It has the same revenue on the top line, but a different proportion of variable cost and fixed cost with the same net profit. So what we see here is that company A has higher fixed cost than company B. Let's do some analysis to see what that really means for the business. We're going to work through an Excel spreadsheet together and we're going to calculate a few items. The first is the break-even point. It's very important to know how many units does a company have to sell in order to break even. Then we'll look at the margin of safety. 
How much room is there until we get to that break-even point? Finally, we'll do some scenario and sensitivity analysis. What if analysis? So, what would the profit be if volumes fell by 50%? And how much sales are required in order to produce $50,000 of profit? These are the types of questions that executives would want to know at our business and are very important for us to be able to quickly analyze. And we'll do that together in the worksheet that's been provided. So let's jump into Excel and look at how to calculate all of these figures for company A and company B.